Okay, in section 2.4, we're going to be translating and solving word problems. And I would like for when you finish in class today and you go to work on your math lab, I want you to feel good about these. I want you to feel like you've got the skills to be able to handle all of these word problems. It would be great if no longer people were intimidated by word problems. That's my goal. All right. The first thing I want to do is remind you of a couple of words. I want to remind you that addition can be indicated by asking you to find a sum. That subtraction can be indicated by asking you to find a difference. These are not the only words, but these are some of the most basic. Multiplication. Keyword is product. And division, keyword quotient. If you happen to have taken pre algebra, Math 301, there was a page in the book that I called everybody's attention to that had all kinds of words that meant certain operations, but these are some of the most basic. All right, what we're going to do first is we're going to translate. a sentence into an equation. And I'm going to do kind of a silly one on this page. Let's suppose I have a sentence. Now, I hope you remember from an English experience that a sentence has to have a subject and a verb. And in communication, Usually it has a whole lot more than just a subject and a verb. So I'm going to write a silly sentence. I'm going to write, the cat is soft. Okay, I have a cat. He is hateful. <laughs> but I didn't want to put that on here. All right. If I were going to translate this into an equation, which would be a little silly since it doesn't have variables and it doesn't have numbers, but I can still translate because the left-hand side of an equation, or I'm sorry, the subject of a sentence becomes the left-hand side of an equation. So it would be the cat. The verb in a sentence becomes the equal sign in an equation. And the right-hand side becomes, comes from the rest of the sentence, which could be a predicate nominative, a predicate adjective. There's all kinds of things, and I have no clue why that just turned blue. Uh, I'm going to work on that. All right. So the left-hand side of the equation comes from the subject, the verb, makes the equal sign, and the rest of the sentence becomes the right-hand side. All right, let's now go ahead and look at some of the problems. Let me make that a little bit bigger. If you had your own, it would, it would really, really help. Okay, I'll just talk softly and be careful. All right, it, question number one. This is on 2.4. It says, using x as the unknown number, write the statement below as an equation. Here it comes. It's still small for you to be able to read, but I will be reading it out loud several times. It says, the, the sum of twice a number and eight is equal to the sum of the number and 6. And for some reason, the 6 got squished right up against the word and. All right. The sum of twice a number and 8 is. Now, I see the equal immediately. The left-hand side, I'm going to translate first. And I'm not going to look at these answer choices right now. I'm just going to make up my own. The sum of. When you read the word sum, what does that make you think? Add. Okay. When you see sum of, you see the preposition of, the very next thing you encounter will go in the first blank. 
you'll hit the word and, you'll jump to the second blank, and you'll see what goes in there. So when it says the sum of first blank, twice a number, how do you express twice a mystery number? 2x. That goes in the first blank. Twice a number. When you see the word and, that tells you to jump to the second blank of the sum. 8. So I will put in 8. I then hit the verb of the sentence, is. That means my equal sign. Going on is equal to the sum of. Oh, I'm going to have a sum over on the right-hand side as well. Sum of the number. What, what do I write down for the number? And 6. Is that okay? All right. So then you would look at those choices and you would say, okay, yes, it is choice C. The first few problems, you're going to find out if you've translated it correctly before you spend any time trying to solve it. So now, I need to solve that, and I might have enough room to do it right now. All right, if I have my yellow line, can I, do I have any fractions? No. No. Do, can I simplify on the left side? No. Or the right side? Okay. Do I have X's on both sides? Yes. yes. So I need to eliminate one of them. It is always your choice. If it doesn't seem to make any difference, then go ahead and get rid of the smaller one. It will make your life a little easier. So I choose to subtract X from both sides. Remember that that X has an implied coefficient of 1, which means that when I subtract it, I have an implied coefficient of negative 1. If I had 2x and I subtract 1x from it, what will I have? 1x. Now you can write the 1 if that helps you, but you don't need to. Plus 8 is equal to, those x's are inverses, and I have a 6 left over. Now, as I referred to it yesterday, the party's going on on the left-hand side. So I'm looking over here. I need to get rid of anything except the present. So what will I do? I will subtract 8 from the left and subtract 8 from the right. That gives me x, those are inverses, is equal to negative 2. Problem done. So we were able to translate and then solve the equation that we got. Is everybody okay with number 1? Okay. Problem number two. It says, using x as the unknown number, write the statement below as an equation. Okay, here comes another translation. Four times a number minus seven is equal to, okay, there's my equal sign, three times the number plus six. Okay, and I'll read it again because I know if you're trying to get it from the screen, it's too tiny. The left-hand side, 4 times a number minus 7. How will I write 4 times a number minus 7? 4x minus 7. 4x minus 7. 4 times a number minus 7. Okay, is equal to 3 times the number plus 6. 3x plus 6. Is that okay? It is usually... Read it, write it. You read it, you write it. Okay. Um, if I look at my answer choices, let's see. It looks like it's choice B. All right, now I need to solve this. And by the way, when you click that, it'll tell you you're right or wrong so that you won't go off and try to solve the wrong equation in case you have a mistake. All right, there aren't any fractions, so I can't do that. I cannot simplify the left, and I cannot simplify the right, but do I have x's on both sides? Yes. So my next step will be to get rid of one of them. I choose to get rid of 3x. That gives me, again, x minus 7 is equal to 6. Everybody okay with that? All right. Looking at the side where the x is, what will my next step be? Add 7. 
that gives me x is 13. Is that okay? All right. The next question has some characteristics in it that I really wanted to call your attention to. And so since I get to pick the questions, that's definitely why I included this one. And this is, you can't see it, but it is question number three. It says write the following as an equation and then solve. Here it comes, and I'll read it out loud. Twice the difference of a number and seven is equal to, okay, got that, three times the sum of the number and two. Find the number. Okay. What I really wanted to call your attention to, and if you happen to have taken Math 301, you might have been exposed to this. It says twice. Now, what does twice mean? Two, two times. Twice means two times. Twice the difference. So I'm going to start out saying two, and then a difference will look like a subtraction. Now, how can, if I just fill things in, and I will, let's fill them in. Difference of, difference of what? A number and seven. X minus seven. If I left it like that, what is getting multiplied by two? Just the X. The way it's written, only the X is. But the entire difference was supposed to be multiplied by 2. How can I make it so that the 2 will get multiplied to both parts of that difference? Parentheses. We mentioned that, I think, in class yesterday. But what I want you to kind of log away in your brain is when it says twice a difference that you're going to need parentheses. Twice a difference three times a difference. If you need to multiply a difference by something, you're going to need parentheses. All right, on the, now I need to write down my equal sign. On the right hand side, it says, and let me scoot over just a little bit, Oops, the other way, it says is equal to three times the sum. Okay, same idea. It is three times a sum. So what am I going to have to make sure the sum is in? Parentheses. So it's going to be three times a sum. Sum of what? Sum of a number and two. X plus two? Is that okay with everybody? All right, so when you multiply a difference, when you multiply a sum by a number, you need parentheses. Now, I am concerned that I may not have enough room to solve this problem right now, so what I'm going to do is go down and put it right here. And I will, oh, well, maybe not right there. And you will be able to see this, I hope. All right, so I had two parentheses, x minus 7 is equal to three parentheses, x plus 2. If I'm going to solve this equation, are there any fractions? No. no? Distributive, property. Distributive property. On the left first, that gives me 2x minus 14. There's nothing more I can do to the left. To the right, distributive property, 3x plus 6. Okay, no more simplifying. Do I have variable terms on both sides? Yes. yes. I choose, and it is a choice, I choose to get rid of the 2x. So I'm going to subtract 2x now, and subtract 2x from both sides. On the left, those are inverses. I end up with negative 14 is equal to, what's 3x? minus 2x. 1x plus 6. And if when you say 1x, if it makes a little more sense for you to write that one down, by all means do it. All right, the variable has ended up on the right hand side of the equation, so my decisions are based on this side. What will I do? 
Next, I will subtract 6, and I have to do it, of course, to both sides. I have a negative 14 and a negative 6. What does that give me? Good, negative 20, because they're both negative, so I add them up and keep the negative. And I get the x and the 6's were inverses. Problem finished. So the, the thing that I really wanted to point out in that translation had to do with parentheses. Twice a difference, three times a sum requires parentheses. All right, let's go back up to where the problems were. Problem number four. It says write the following equation as an equation and then solve. Here it comes. Four times the sum of negative one and a number is equal to five times the number decreased by a quarter. And I'm supposed to find the number. All right, I hope that you noticed that it said four times the sum. All right, which means that I'm going to need what? I'm going to need parentheses. I'm going to write my equation right up here. It's going to be four times the sum of negative one and the number, so it's going to be negative one and an x. Close those parentheses. Four times the sum of blank and blank. Equal sign. On the right hand side, it says five times the number. It doesn't say five times the sum. It doesn't say five times the difference. Five times the number. How will you write five times the number? 5x. No parentheses needed. And then it finishes with decreased by, what operation is that? Subtraction. Subtraction, one quarter. Is the translation okay? Because I had four times a sum, I had to have parentheses, and on the right side I had five times a number, I did not need parentheses. All right, I'm going to go down where I have room to work. Copy down the problem. All right, and I will scoot it up just as soon as my little machine gives me some more lines at the bottom. All right, do I have any fractions? Yes. 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 So I'm going to, um, I don't remember, I'll just use red. What am I going to multiply by? What's the denominator of all the fractions? Four. Four. Question? Shouldn't a 5x minus a quarter be in parentheses? Okay, not that one. If it had said five times the difference of, oh, okay. but it said five times the number. Okay? So that's really, really something I want you to tune into. This, the left side was four times the sum. So it did get parentheses, but the right side was five times the number, so it did not. All right, denominator, common denominator, well, there's only one denominator, so it's four. So I'm going to multiply by four. I have to be kind of careful on the left-hand side. If I'm going to multiply by four, I'm going to write my red four, and then I'm going to copy down the rest of this. Now, why did I not multiply? inside here by a 4 and inside here by a 4. It will get distributed in the next step. This red 4 out here combined with the black 4 that was already there will they'll get multiplied together but it will get carried inside through the distributive property. So it would have been redundant for me to write it inside and outside. Okay. If you had put it inside and outside, no. You need to put it inside or outside. Yes. yes. And outside makes a little more sense to me, so that's what I did. Yes, but uh, okay, no, or, or maybe I am. Okay, it it's less writing for me. Yeah, and I always go the easy route. All right, 
um, equal to, I need 4 times 5x minus, and I need 4 times 1 fourth. There we go. All right, over here, do you all agree that that really is a 16? Yes. That the 4 times 4, the red 4 that's compensating for the fact that I'm multiplying by the LCD, and the black 4 that was already there really make up a 16. So I'm going to distribute 16 times negative 1 gives me negative 16, and 16 times x give me, gives me 16x. Equal sign. I have 20x, and the last term, what happens when you multiply 4 times 1 fourth? Right, those 4's divide out, and you're left with one. minus 1. Now, it's probably no big deal to you, but I've kind of left off my yellow line. There it is. All right. It's a little weird. You might have saved yourself some grief if you had distributed first and then multiplied everything by 4, and you would have gotten exactly the same answer. All right, finish with my simplifying. Do I have variable terms on both sides? Yes. So I choose to subtract 16x from both sides. That gives me negative 16 equal to... 4x and a minus 1. And I'm sorry that slowed down. Sometimes this just will not give me more room on the paper. Anybody have a question so far? All right. Now, which side do I focus on? The right side, because that's where the x is. That's where the party's going on. What do I do as my next step? Add a 1. So I'm going to add 1 and add 1. <coughs> All right, that gives me negative 15 is equal to 4x. See, so this is where my problem is with the sign. How would you know if there's six, negative 16 plus 1? Okay. How would you stop when you add 1 to be 17? Okay, let's, the rule, and you can sort of make it easy if you're writing your problems like I am. If the two numbers you have have the same sign, they're either both plus or they're both minus, you do addition and keep the sign. But if the two numbers have different signs, then you always subtract and keep the sign of the bigger one. Think about it like weight loss. If you lost 16 pounds and you gained one pound, you'd be down 15 pounds because they went in opposite directions. If you think about it on a football field, heaven forbid, but if you got knocked back 16 yards, unless you're rooting for the defense. Okay, if you got not back 16 yards, and then on the next down, you managed one yard, you'd still be back 15. So when the two signs of the numbers have are different, you always perform subtraction. Okay? All right, and now our final step, we're down to the coefficient, and what do we do to both sides? Divide, divide. so I will divide by four, divide by four, and I haven't had to do that in problems one, two, and three. Their coefficients all turned out to be ones. But this one was a four. And does four go into negative 15 evenly? No. no. And I don't want a decimal, and I don't want a mixed number. I just want negative 15 over four. It can't be reduced or simplified because I can't think of a number that will go into both 15 and four. By the way, when you're doing this in math lab, in my math lab, when you are typing this in, you could type in negative 15 over 4 and get full credit. You could type in a negative sign in front of the fraction, it just went away, I'll do it down here. You could have the fraction, you could type in the negative sign in front of it, and then put 15 over 4. And that would be acceptable. Or, 
the next one is a little odd to me, but it does work. You can put 15 over negative 4. That isn't the way my problem worked out, so I never would have done that. But my point is, if a fraction is a negative quantity, the negative sign can be put in the numerator, out in front of the entire fraction, or even with the denominator, but only one time. Just pick a place. Any one of those would be okay. Is that okay? All right. So way back up here. We have done problems one through four, which I call number problems. I call them number problems because they don't have any real application. They're just talking about a couple of numbers or a number, just one number. We change when we get to problem number five and we start talking about different things other than numbers. This one is about pieces of a string. Okay, now let me read through number five because you probably can't see it from your desk. Okay. It says, a 19-foot piece of string is cut into two pieces so that one piece is four feet longer than twice the shorter. If the shorter piece is X feet long, find the length of both pieces. I want to make this an extremely easy problem for you. Everybody recognize that there are two unknowns. Okay. When there are two unknowns, then there have to be two facts in the problem. There have to be two facts. Two unknowns, two facts. By the way, if there were three unknowns, there would have to be three facts. Four unknowns, four facts. They have to give you a fact, one additional fact for every unknown. All right. When there are two unknowns, of the two facts, yes, ma'am? It's shorter piece. I can't get it to show the whole thing, but it is shorter piece. Um, of those two facts, one of them will be a comparison. It'll be directly relating the two. Now, I want to take a, just a moment and come down here on some blank paper, and I want to talk about comparisons. And those of you who have were in my 301 class, I apologize because you're going to hear some of the same stuff you've heard before. So, same old tired stuff. But that's not the majority of you. All right, comparisons. We're going to practice figuring out how to, what's going to be X, and then how do I write the other one? That's what I want to do. And I want to talk about two math teachers. And I can already feel some of y'all laughing at me. All right, the two math teachers are Lisa and Terry. Okay, I am Lisa. My sister Terry also teaches in the math department. She is teaching online this summer one, so she's not around for me to drag her in here and let you laugh with her too. But I'm gonna give you some comparisons between us and everything I tell you will be true, okay? But they're the same old stories. All right, first one I'm going to tell you, this one's one of my favorites. Terry is two years older than Lisa. Okay? Yes, I'm the young one. Now, you might not could tell that if you were looking at us, but I am. Okay. Terry is two years older than Lisa. In that sentence, which one of us did I not really tell you any information about? Lisa. Lisa. Terry is two years older than Lisa. But Lisa was at the end of the sentence and I didn't tell you anything about her or me. <coughs> what that means is something that's unknown is X. The thing you know absolutely nothing about is X. All right, now I told you something about Terry. Terry is two years older than Lisa. So if X is my age, how would you express her age? Plus two. So it would be X plus 2. <coughs> now, in my first class, somebody said, well, why wouldn't it be 2X? And I said, because my sister would beat the crap out of me if I told you she was twice as old as I am. 
Okay, because she's not. She's two years older, and that means plus two. And I did not say she was twice as old. So I'm not going to get in trouble for that one. All right, now, there would have to be some more information for you to figure out our ages. But let's just suppose, let's just suppose that you figured out that I was 30. You, of course, would have made a mistake, but let's pretend that you figured out I was 30. If I were 30, how old would Terry be? 32. 32. If I were 45, how old would Terry be? 47. Okay, so if you know the one that's X, then it's real easy to calculate the other one. All right, let's do another comparison. Lisa is 8 inches shorter than Terry. Lisa is 8 inches shorter than Terry. Who am I telling you nothing about? Terry. Terry. So this time, I'll let her be Y. That will be her height is Y. Now my height, I'm 8 inches shorter than she is. How would you express? It will be, and I use letter Y, so I'll stick with that, it will be Y minus 8. Now not 8 minus Y, and listen to the words again. Lisa is 8 inches shorter than Terry. That is the same as less than, and less than is a reversing phrase. Okay? Now, if, and Terry is 5'10". Okay, she's 5'10", which means how tall am I? 5'2". I have on heels, so I can see over the counter here. But um, those are accurate heights. I got none of the height in the family. All right, last one. This one's my favorite. Terry has five times as many children as Lisa does. Who gets to be unknown? Lisa. Lisa, because Terry has five times as many children as Lisa, but I didn't tell you anything about me. So I will be, I will have Z children. How will I express Terry's children? 5Z. And just so you don't worry about her, I just have one son. Okay, so yes, she does have five children. All right, so, but do you get the comparison idea? When you read it and it says, Lisa is, uh, Terry is two years older than Lisa, Lisa's at the end of the sentence, totally unknown, that means I get to be X. Then you decide how Terry was described. All right, let's go back up to our question about the strings. It says, a 19-foot piece of string is cut into two pieces so that, and here it comes, one piece is four feet longer than twice the shorter, and that's cut off of the screen. Okay, which one do you know nothing about? The shorter. The shorter. So what I'm going to start out saying is, and I'll copy this over in another place in a minute, X is going to represent the shorter one. because I know nothing about it, because it came at the end of the comparison. Now, it says one piece. It obviously is talking about the longer piece. The longer piece is four feet longer than twice the short one. How will I write four longer than twice the short one? Four plus two X. Longer than could have translated into more than, which would have hopefully told you to add. So the long one is four longer than twice the short one. That will be the longer piece. In your word problems where there are two unknowns, this is going to be the first step you always do. Find the comparison. The one that is not described gets to be X. The one that is described will be either more than X, less than X, something times X, or maybe a combination of those. All right, now let's see if we can write an equation, and then I will transfer all of this to another workspace. All right, I have these two pieces. 
There's another fact. What's the other fact? It's 19, feet it's 19 feet long. The whole rope, string, whatever it is, is 19 feet long. Well, what does that mean in arithmetic? What do I do to the two pieces to make it become 19? Add them, yes. So the sum of the short piece and the long piece add up to be 19. The author of your book seems to like to do this. So don't be surprised if in a lot of your problems you add up those two things that you have. So I'm going to have x plus 4 plus 2x equals 19. So now if you will bear with me, you get to take a little breather while I go get a little spot on here and write this down. This is problem number five, and I like to write all of it down. X is the shorter. 4 plus 2X is the longer. And the equation that we came up with was X plus 4 plus 2X is 19. And seeing any of that would be a good thing. There you go. If I'm going to solve this equation now, are there any fractions? No. No. Can I simplify on the left? Yes. 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 Now, sometimes people get so used to looking for distributive property that they forget about the fact that like terms qualifies as you need to simplify. So I'm going to add my implied 1x to the 2x to get 3x plus 4 is 19. Now I've simplified. Do I have variable x on both sides? No. no. So the party's going on on the left-hand side. What do I need to do as my next step? I need to get rid of the 4, and I'll do it with subtraction. That gives me 3x. The 4s were inverses. Equal to, okay, yes, 15. Now, first of all, you knew that 19 minus 4 was 15. But it also followed the rule that said if one of them's positive and one of them's negative, subtract. Okay. Final step is to do what? Divide, Divide by the coefficient, which is 3. And this one turned out to be a nice x is 5. I'm not quite finished with the problem because I know only what? The shorter piece. I told, we decided that x represented the shorter piece. So this one was shorter. But I need to know the longer. Now, there's two ways to do it. What's one way? OK. One way is to take the 5 and plug it in. Plug it in where? Plug it in this expression for the longer one. Now, this is the way I'm going to do it each time. There is another way, and I'll do it the other way in a minute. So that's 4 plus 2 times not x anymore, but 5. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 4 is 14 is the longer. Now, did anybody come up with another way to get the longer? What's another way? Just subtract. If you know that the two pieces add up to be 19, and you know one of them's 5, take 5 from 19 and you get the 14. This technique that I've written down has more value to it in other kinds of problems because you won't always be dealing with a sum. So I suggest that you try to do this. You have x and you have 4 plus 2x. At the end of the problem, you need to have x and 4 plus 2x. Whatever you get for x, you're going to plug in the place of x and do order of operations. Is everybody okay with that? All righty. All right, let's go back and see if that comparison idea works on the next problem. There we go. Problem number six says, the weight of, a me of meteorite A is six times the weight of meteorite B. 
if the sum of their weights is 126 tons, and then the word that you can't see on the screen says find the weight of each. Okay. There are two facts in there because there are two unknowns. Do you see a comparison? Mm -hmm. The weight of meteorite A is six times the weight of meteorite B. Which one will be unknown? B. B. So I'm going to let, I've got a little room, X equal B's weight. How will I express meteorite A's weight? 6X. 6X, because it says it is 6 times that weight. So 6X will be A's weight. All right, now I leave that comparison alone. It's done. Now I go looking for another fact. What's the other fact in here? Right. The sum of their weights is 126. And sometimes you will hear the word total. So total, sum, combined, all together. That means you're supposed to add them. So you're going to add what? X plus 6X is 126. And now, while you actually get to take a break, I go down and find some blank paper to write that on. All right, I have X is B's weight. I have 6X is A's weight. And I have X plus 6X is 126. All right. I don't have any fractions. Can I simplify on the left side? Yes. I have an implied 1x with 6x, which add together to be 7x, is 126. What's my only step? Divide by 7. It is the coefficient of the variable. That gives me x is equal to 18. What did we just find? B's weight, the weight of meteorite B. And I'll just put a B beside that. How can I pretty easily calculate A's? Yes, 6X represents A's weight. So that's 6 times 18, which is 108. And that's A's. When you're doing this in math lab, Make sure that you put the correct answer with the correct <coughs> question because it actually asks you about A before it asks you about B, even though you will calculate B's before A's. So you'll want to do the whole problem, look back, and then decide what's the right answer. <coughs> All right. Number seven. Let's go back up to seven. All right, there are two more questions. Seven is very much like the one that we've been working, the ones we've been working on. It says, two angles are supplementary if their sum is 180 degrees. That's a fact. The larger angle measures six degrees more than five times the measure of the smaller angle. Now, they cheat and tell you what to let x be. And I'm just going to mark that out. I'm not going to take advantage of that. Of course, it'll be there in math lab. If I read that again, the larger angle measures six degrees more than five times the measure of the small angle. Which of the two angles will be x? The, the smaller. The smaller. X will be the small one. And I'm just going to use the angle symbol, small angle.
the larger angle, it says, the large angle measures six degrees more than, what will I do with that? Now, it will be very clear if it wants you to multiply. It will use the word times. And it doesn't. It says more than. So if for more than, we're going to use plus. Okay? So it is going to be 6 plus 5 times the small one. So what will I write? 6 plus 5x. So when you read more than, it means add. All right, so six more than five times the small one. That's the large angle. Now, it's a little bit cluttered on here, but I need to write an equation, which means somewhere in there there's another fact. Uh, we've got the comparison. 180. 180. What is 180? The sum. Okay, so I know that x plus 6 plus 5x is 180. Their sum is 180. So one more time. I'm going to go find a spot. Um, I'll go down here. All right, this is 7. X is the small angle. And 6 plus 5x is the large angle. And x plus 6 plus 5x equals 180. Okay. This is an equation to solve. Do I have any fractions? No, you're probably getting tired of me saying that. But I'm going to say it every time. I'm going to say all the rules. All right, there are no fractions. Can you simplify on the left? Yeah. Yes. I can combine the 1x to the 5x for 6x plus the 6 that's already there is equal to 180. There's no more simplifying. All right. What am I going to do to begin to isolate? I'm going to subtract that constant 6 from both sides, and that gives me 6x is equal to... 174. What's my final step? Divide. divide by 6. Divide by 6. And x is equal to 29. What did we just find? The smaller angle. The smaller angle. There really are two ways for us to calculate the larger angle. Somebody might just very quickly subtract 29 from 180 and get the answer. Or what's the other way? The, um, Right. These are your definitions at the top, and they should virtually be repeated at the bottom. In the place of x, I put 29. So it's 6 plus 5 times 29, which gives me how much for the big angle? 151. And like I said, you could have shortcutted the problem just a little bit, or shortcut the problem, I'm not sure what the past tense of that is, by simply subtracting 29 from 180. See, I could have done 29 times 5 times 6. Yes, mm -hmm. that's exactly what I did. I just didn't show any of the intermediate steps. Okay, I'm going to stay here on my writing, well, actually I'm going to go up here and I want to read number eight, and then I want to have a little discussion. It says, the number of counties in state A and the number of counties in state B are consecutive, and I know you can't see the word, but it says consecutive even integers, whose sum is 106. Okay. And then it goes on to say state A has more than state B. Now, I think it's a little bit vague in this one what the comparison is. I mean, they tell you one's bigger than the other, but, you know, okay, that's not very helpful. The comparison is in the 
it's disguised by talking about consecutive even integers. Consecutive even integers. So I want to take just a minute and talk to you about consecutives. First, consecutive integers. It is going to be very easy for you to figure out what variables to use when the problem mentions consecutive integers. Okay, first of all, what does it mean to be an integer? It's a whole value that's either positive, negative, or zero. Like negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Those numbers on the number line. Those are the integers. Consecutive integers, what does consecutive mean? One after the other. Okay, so would you agree that an example of consecutive integers could be 3, 4, and 5. Okay. Uh, would you say that an example could be 9, 10, and 11? And I just chose to do three consecutive integers. I could have chosen to do 5 or 10, but 3 seemed like a good amount. What we're going to do when a problem refers to consecutive integers is that we're always going to let x represent the first integer. How much do I have to increase by to get to the second one? Two. All right, from 9 to 10 one. is 1. From 3 to 4 is 1. So from one integer to the next consecutive, do you agree that you have to add 1? Yes. Okay, so I will call x plus 1 the second integer. Starting back with the first one, how much do you have to increase the first one by to get to the last one? Two. two. So x plus 2 would be the third integer. And could you continue that pattern if a problem happened to talk about five consecutive integers? Yes. Say one more time. And the fourth problem? Uh-huh. Yes. Consecutive even integers whose, and then it goes on to the next line, sum is 106. All right, now, what I've written on the board so far will not help us too much with this problem because it did not restrict this problem to consecutive integers. It restricted it to consecutive even integers. So let's talk about those. Consecutive, even, or odd integers. And you may be surprised that whatever I say about even integers is going to be true for odd integers. Okay, would somebody give me Three consecutive even integers. All right, I heard two, four, six. Could I have another set? 10, 12, 14. 10, 12, 14. Would you give me a set of consecutive odd integers? 1, 3, 5. One, three, five. And what's another set? I'll take anything. 7, 9, and 11. Okay, so y'all have just given me some sets of consecutive evens or odds. If I let x be the first even or odd, and that's probably off the screen. The first even or odd. If the numbers are either even or odd, how much gap is there between the first and the second? Two. two. And it doesn't matter what kind of numbers they were. X plus two will be the second even or odd. And then how much gap is there from the very first one to the third one? Four. Don't you add two every time. Okay. 
So this one will be x plus 4 is the third even or odd. So what I hope you have now, if a problem refers to consecutive integers, then you'll know that the first one will be x and the next one will be x plus 1, x plus 2, x plus 3, however many you need. But if the problem uses the word even or odd, then x would be the first one. You'll add 2 to get to the second one. You'll add 4 to get to the third one. You'll add 6 to get to the next one and so on. So <coughs> the problem doesn't have to spell out the comparison by simply saying even integers, odd integers, or just consecutives, you'll know what to do. All right, so back to that problem. It says, again, this is number eight, the number of counties in state A and the number of counties in state B are consecutive even integers. The minute I read that, I bet I can do it right here. They're consecutive even integers, and there's only two of them. So I know x is going to be one of them, and what's the other one going to be? X plus, two. x plus 2. Now, I need to know which one is which. <coughs> That's where that one little statement is helpful. If state A has more than state B. So x will be state B, because that's a smaller one, and x plus 2 will be state A. It never said a single word about one of them is two more than the other. Instead, it referred to them as consecutive evens. So I knew to do that. It also had another fact. Do you remember the other fact? The sum is... 106. So x plus x plus 2 is 106. Are there any fractions? No. no. Can I simplify on the left side? Yes. yes. 1x plus 1x gives me 2x plus 2 is 106. What will I do next? Subtract, Subtract 2 from both sides. That gives me 2x is 104. And what's my last step? Divide. Divide by 2. And I get x is 52. And do you agree that that is state B? Yes. And state A is 2 more than that, so, so it's 54. When there are two unknowns, there will be two statements in the problem, and one of them will give you the comparison, and the other one will help you write the equation. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just curious, do you know how many counties the state of Texas has? 254. You can always remember that from now on because it's our area code. And that's just a coincidence. Okay, so 254, that's how many counties there are. And so I just wanted to share a little trivia with you. All right, that's going to stop lesson 2.4.